Hey, welcome back to RimWorld Science, where today we're going to be talking about melee weapons. And to kick it off, we should talk about exactly how melee combat works. So let's get these uh, two clones kind of attacking each other. And you can see they kind of each take a turn trying to hit the other. And basically, melee combat happens where whenever they land a hit, they make some damage. If they don't land a hit, no damage is made. And that is all affected by three separate factors. So come over here to the gear. If you look at the Gladius here, you can see there is a melee damage and a melee cooldown. The cooldown tells us how much time there's going to be between each time that uh, Sayuri here tries to strike. And the damage is how many points of damage will be done if they in fact hit. And you can divide the damage by the cooldown to get a DPS or damage per second value. But that value is actually a little bit optimistic. So if you come in here to Sayuri's stats, you can see she has got here an 86% chance of hitting, of actually striking, and that is factored by manipulation, by sight, and by the melee skill, and Sayuri here is a 20. And so what happens is the calculation is that each time she gets a chance to strike, it calculates that value calculates how likely it'll be that her strike will be on target. Now we should notice that even if a strike is on target, it might not hit because the other person has a chance to dodge. And their chance to dodge is also settled by their melee uh, stat. So that's a chance like that your strike is on target, not a guarantee that it'll hit. If it does hit, then the amount of damage it does is given by uh, the damage there. And happily, if you come along and look at each of the stats, the DPS that this gives you is actually the DPS for the weapon held. So you see it's got the 1.95 cooldown and the 12 uh, damage that you get here for in the gear menu as well. Now if you come over here to somebody who's got nothing at all in her hot little fist, you can see that for her... Uh, this DPS is the DPS of just her open fists. So the open fist is a 6.99 melee damage and a 1.6 uh, cooldown. And you, what you also you can see is the main thing that the skill factor does is change the value, like the likelihood of your hits being on target. So at a melee skill of 20, you've got a 90% chance of your hit being on target. Freckles over here, however, is only a skill level of 3. He's only got a 59% chance of hitting on target. So now that we know how melee fighting works, you might wonder, what is the best melee weapon to use? Now, that's a hard question because in addition to seven different types of melee weapon, the shiv, club, knife, uh, mace, gladius, spear, and longsword, and the non-manufacturable or non-weapon swords like beer or thrumbo horns or things like that, the ones that are manufactured also come in different materials and they come in different qualities. Now the different qualities will just change what their damage is, and the different materials will change both their cooldown and how much damage they do. Also notice that weapons are divided into those that give blunt damage and go that give sharp damage. And the type of modifier that the material gives is based heavily uh, on what kind of damage it does, sharp or blunt. So I'll put up on screen the information from the wiki of what those modifiers are. But if we're going to test this, we are going to test it by just looking at the baseline, which is normal steel weapons. Even so, there's an awful lot of different weapons that could be tested. So rather than testing every single pairing out, what I did is arrange a tournament that is meant to go just by the base DPS of the uh, baseline weapons. So each heat in the tournament consisted of five runs of something like this. We had, uh, say, five people over here, for instance, with clubs, five over here, for instance, with gladiuses. And then I would just watch and see of each pairing who downed their opponent first. Now, each of these people here, each of my Sayuris, they're all clones. They're level 20 fighters in perfect health and fighting a tribal with a melee ability of zero also in perfect health. The reason for tribal archers is because then they'll only fight back with their fists and they'll also not have any armor to soak up any of the damage. So we can have like the purest kind of test just of the weapons themselves. And the way it's scored is whenever of a pairing somebody went downs their person first, they get one point for that. Uh, if there's a tie, if they down them at the exact same time, they each get a half a point. And if the tribal fighter actually downs the uh, Maisayuri, then that's a minus one. 
Now, by and large, in the tournament, the uh, weapons went along with the DPS values that you would expect. Uh, the fist beat out the wood by 24 to 1. The beer beat out the shiv by 5 to 18. Uh, the fist beat out the shiv by 13 to 12. Uh, the club beat out the knife by 20 and a half to 5 and a half. And that was a bit of a dark horse. The club consistently punched above its weight, unlike everything else. The gladius beat out the mace, and the spear beat the gladius by 17 to 8. Uh, then the club and the spear actually tied, with the club once again punching way above its weight. I was surprised enough by this that I tried that a couple more times. And although sometimes uh, the club would win and sometimes the spear would win, it was always really, really close. And so I ended up uh, just sending them both on to the next heat, giving them a chance against the longsword. Here, the spear actually beat the longsword by a surprising 14 to 1, so another surprising showing. Uh, but the sword dominated the club at 17 and a half to a 7 and a half. Finally, I thought it'd be fun to test the sword, which uh, seemed to be a top of the line against the Thrumbohorn. Unsurprisingly, the Thrumbohorn dominated in that. And I also went ahead and tried the Thrumbohorn against uh, a Sayuri with a um, Scyther Blade attached to her arm. And I was surprised there that the horn actually slightly outdid the Scyther Blade. So what do we learn from all this? Well, one thing we learned kind of right off the bat is that there are some things that are just not as good as a bare fist. So when you're looking to pick some melee weapons, like check what the melee damage on your fighter is just empty handed. You might do better to stay with nothing at all than to pick up that shiv. The second thing is that in general, you would do better with higher DPS uh, weapons than lower, but when that DPS difference is like around one point, that's not enough to like guarantee that in 25 separate trials, you're gonna come out with, more, you know, beating the other one more often than not. So the DPS value is a good guide, but it's a bit of a rough guide. It puts things in an order, but that doesn't mean a slightly higher DPS is always gonna dominate. Now, while I was running the tournament, I was also keeping track of how many of the different uh, tribals were downed versus how many were outright killed. And I have some numbers here. Out of 275 blunt attacks, 82 were downed instead of killed. So that's about 30%. Whereas out of a 325 sharp attacks, only 82 were downed. That's a little lower at about 25.5. Now it doesn't seem very likely that what's going on is that there's a little bit like hard-coded chance to down. Rather, notice that like if you're cutting then whoever you down is more likely to bleed. And so there's a better chance that once they're down, that they'll bleed out before I have a chance to like record them than uh, the people who have just the kind of getting beaten on with, with blunt because they're not bleeding. They're just down. They're, you know, they're just bruised and cracked and, and hurt that way. So it looks to me like there's about a 30% chance for any of the melee weapons to down and, uh, it's simply that when you're cutting people, since they're bleeding, they might die after they've been down. It's kind of more likely that that's going to happen. Now, that's just a hypothesis. I don't have data to really confirm it outright, but that's how it looks to me. Well, where does that leave us? Well, judging from the test, it looks like if you want to down someone fast, use a club. Um, on top of that, you know, when you have your particular weapons out, check what their DPS value is. Just go for the highest DPS if you want to get people out of your way as fast as possible. Go for blunt if you want to capture instead of kill. And have fun fighting. Uh, that is all the time I have for today. As always, let me know in the comments what you'd like to do next. If you enjoyed this episode, please do uh, click the like button before you leave. It really helps my channel out. And thank you, as always, so much for watching. I'll see you soon.